It is the day that we all begin. Room one of Carrington House is underway. I have safety glasses, hat, covered in shoes and a work shirt and we are about to get stuck in on room one. is actually quite straightforward to demolish because its ceilings and its walls are already gyp rocked and they're in not great condition but at this stage I don't see any reason to waste that gyp rock and take it to landfill. I will be taking down the boring old cornice that is there and we certainly will be having to do a lot of repairs to that gyp rock. However, it is in pretty good nick and I see no use wasting it. The floor is a different kettle of fish. It has old boards and then we have some um, particle boards and ply boards and masonite over the top of that. So I'm really unsure what we're going to find. The whole purpose of today isn't to be demolishing the front part of this. We'll need to wait for the builders to come in to do that because we're going to then need to fit our doors for security, safety and privacy to there straight away. So today is all about taking up the floors and finding out what is below. It could be a surprise of excitement or despair. Let's see. One of the less glamorous parts of renovating and demoing is actually preparing the room and preparing the space. So as you know, I'd already moved my offices and my team in here quite a while ago, and this room is being used as a storage space. So I need to build capacity somewhere else for all of these boxes and this shelving to go, and I need to get it there fast. As usual, I love doing things with my dad and he is naturally on site helping today. Okay, first things first, let's get this patchwork quilt of particle board and masonite that had obviously been put down by the previous owners to try and stabilize the floor. Let's get it up and out and see what we've got to work with. Okay, not as bad as I thought. We have a pile of beautiful wide hardwood boards which are in a state of disrepair, but at this point I still can't tell what is underneath. We're gonna work hard at getting one of these boards up and then hopefully the rest will come up really simply. Okay, okay, it's obvious they are not coming up as easily as we thought. And it's actually because there is two to three layers of walls penning them in on the sides. So a simple solution is crack out the circular saw, cut down the side, then they will come out nice and easy, I'm sure. Now, the good news is that although these boards aren't in good enough condition for me to reuse in this property, they are a fantastic find for one of my other projects at the Lawn Rose Farm. So all of these beautiful, wide, hardwood boards, I'm gonna denail them with Ferris Building Team I'm gonna head them on up to the Lawn Rose Farm and see what amazing things I can create with them up there. As you can see, there is not a lot of ground clearance here and these joists are in really bad condition along the edges and have a lot of water damage. So we're gonna be needing to take them out. Hey, Bert. Happy Saturday. Thanks. Working on a Saturday. Yeah. Realistically, there's rot, 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 and some more rot. This piece of timber used to actually hold up the floor. So this is room number one at Carrington House. I'm here with Josh from Team Ferris Building. And it's not exactly as expected. No, definitely not as expected, but no shock. Uh, common with the older homes. Yeah. But and we did know that there was the big water leak, and I think this is evidence of how long it was been going on, because you can even see a tide mark yeah. on the ground, hey? Yeah. But look, there's always solutions, huh? We can fix it. So what's that biggest challenge now, though? I get that the, the bearers obviously didn't exist and rot it. The joists are a bit, how are you going? Yeah, this was a, this was a bearer, as you can see. <laughs> And this one was too, wasn't it? So the water's what, obviously... Do I have a sword fight? This is, yeah, water... <laughs> water, um, water can do some amazing things. 
but this one's been, definitely been a very long ongoing water leak. Yeah. It looks like it's actually burnt, doesn't it? But it's it not does, it's, it's totally rotted. Um, so I think the challenge is now is, is giving it enough time to dry out so the room doesn't smell musky like it did when we ripped it up this it morning. Stinks, hey. um, and then... One of the ongoing challenges of this space though, so because this is all bricked in around the bottom, right? Is air. I noticed, so the back two rooms have a little bit of airflow to them. I noticed someone's like knocked a hole in over there and I'm assuming that's to try and get some air to here because that's into the back cavity. I would say that's probably the power through, to tell you the truth. You reckon? Yeah. Well, these days the rules are part of the construction that is we have underfloor vents to get that airflow going. Um, How are we going to do that here? Because we can only go that way. This way, I think land is all the way up to here. Mm. The front's veranda, that side. Who knows what's under that entry floor? So it's really only back into that next room that way. We might keep running these joists the same way they were. Yep. Um, and yeah, maybe cut some holes in this wall here, maybe in this corner to dry it out a bit more and get some airflow from the back there all the way around. That's probably one of the um, solutions. I think also clearing some of this dirt around the outside here. There's not much we can do for termite protection in the future, um, but what we will do is take away their opportunity to you know, get into this wet and area this and up. then into you know, the, the... So that brings up something really interesting. So most of the timbers that we've demoed out of here today have been in some state of disrepair. And often people would freak out and automatically assume that this is something, except for the fact that this is wet, if it was dry, that it's something to do with termites. Does wood rot, apart from being wet, which this is, if this was dry, can you tell the difference between looking at something for termite damage and something for water damage? Termite damage, you'll actually see uh, smooth little um, channels in the timber where they've eaten it away. This one like here, little moles where they Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one here's uh, the actual timber is still intact but it just disintegrates when you pull it apart. So it doesn't have like little road maps where they ran. Mm. Yeah, this is just all it's powdery, hey. Yeah. Like so I think um, even yeah, yeah, I think in all the architraves it's got the channels from the termites, so we can maybe show everyone. It's probably different timber, you're right. Yeah. I mean, hardwood, they will eat hardwood, but they'll go elsewhere to find... Softwood. Softwood. Um, Lazy little creatures. But yeah, and, and they want... With the grain of hardwood, the... I mean, I'm not sure if this is a fact, but the... the experience I've seen is they don't like the hardwood because the grain is so tight and so hard. Yeah. Um, opportune. They're opportune predators. They are. But with termites, they will eat it, but they'll leave enough there where it won't fall down. So your place will actually technically never fall down. They're that good at engineers. Are you serious? I'm serious. Um, promise you, yeah. They'll never wow. ever eat it so bad that it'll fall down. That's random. Mm. That is really random. Well, I think now that... Um, we were hopeful in here that we could save the joists, but um, when we ripped up the floor, you would have seen that someone had half pulled back the floor and tried to fix yeah. the joists already to the wall. We've got our old sandstone flings, so we, we won't have concrete flings underneath here. These are all dug into the dirt, and they're actually... So do they just sit on nothing? They sit on nothing. Wow. That's cool, hey. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? When you look at this external wall, it is as straight as... I've found that this looks like it's freshly plumbed in, but it's not. As you can, if you come around this side, you can actually see where it's moving and that that would be leaking through there straight into the house. Hmm. And as we've had a lot of rain lately, that would be contributing to the dampness in there. Because this is the wall that goes onto the room with all the moisture in it. So not really just contributing, making it. Well, okay, making it as well. Makes sense now. Why? Why? Is there so... a downpipe there? Is there? A is there? A, is it plumbed? Can it be plumbed under there? Do you know? There is a pipe there, and there's a pipe in the gutter out in the street. We just need to find out if it works. 
but it's not plumbed in properly at cool. all. So first step is to get a hose down and make sure that goes to the yep. water, yep. the road. Yep. Second step is to get my plumber out to sort that out. Yes. On it. For every unwelcome surprise, there is always a wonderful surprise. And today we take delivery of some of the most amazing doors I've ever seen from my friends at Hume Doors. There are a lot of doors coming into the front of this property and it is going to start to rebuild the charm and the welcoming feel that this property is lacking so badly. Now you all know that I believe in using qualified trades for pretty much anything on my site. I have a lot of know-how, but when it comes to structural work, I will not compromise on quality. So I have the team from Ferris Building in, and this morning is all about briefing Regan on exactly what my vision is for the front, what I have planned, what materials I have on order, and hopefully getting him on board with how I want it to roll. Communicating with your builder and making sure that you understand each other, understand what roles you're going to be taking in a project and making sure that everyone has a clear vision of what the end product will look like is absolutely essential. So I always make sure that I have a plan for my builders. I have product lists, specs lists. And so if I'm ever not on site, they have everything they need at their fingertips. And voila! The old door is out. Sadly, those bricks that Zach is playing with with his shovel are coming away a little easier than I'd like, but I'm not gonna jump the gun. First, I'm gonna work with the team on exactly what's going to go in here. Surprisingly to many people, doors are not as simple as they seem. Certainly fitting jams and trims and doors and making sure they open the right way and they're rebated the right way and that their hinges work as they should and that the locks line up. There's actually a pile of work and planning that goes into openings, especially ones of this size. So I'm going to leave the boys to nut all of that out. I've shown them the product. I've shown them exactly how I want it to look. And this is the moment where you hand it over to your qualified team. Hey guys, it is the end of week one at Carrington House and to say that it's presented some challenges is an understatement and that's okay. It's kind of how it rolls in reno, I guess. Um, so some of our biggest wins this week is that when we knocked out windows, there were no surprises in that nothing fell down on top of us, which is always a bonus. Um, one of the challenges that did occur when we knocked out that big window on room one is that the um, basically the foundation where we needed for the new door frame to go and the new door jams didn't exist. Um, all the bricks are super crumbly. You touch them and they were just falling away. So this week, I'm happy to report lots of surprises, but nothing that was too nasty. We managed to sort out our water issue. So it got tidied up. The stormwater got replumbed and all our deliveries came on time. Um, so, so far, so good. Next week is a really big week of rebuilding. And to be honest with you, I find the first week of reno always so much easier than the others. There seems to be so much more progress. Demo moves so much quicker. I find for impatient persons like me um, that the rebuild can often do my head in um, because it feels so much slower um, than the demo. So I have big plans for next week. I'll let you know them in the next diary. Um, and until then, enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're following me on Instagram to see my latest design and reno inspiration. You can find me at Naomi Findlay Official or click the link in my description. See you soon.